this uh, is, is about um, really an opportunity to meet the filmmakers, but also from the festival's point of view, um, <coughs> what uh, we're interested in is promoting talent, um, promoting uh, new and emerging talent. And this is my first year not doing the actual programme uh, for the festival in terms of um, you know, the international competitions and the animation side. So Gaia, who I'm sure you've met, is actually put programmes together for um, the Proof and Counter element, and Kieran Arvo has been doing the animation side. And I've been taking more, I'm more of us a creative director overview of the festival. And so what I did was watch the, their selections, and then together um, we came up with um, filmmakers and films that you, you have seen on the screen, hopefully, and the filmmakers that you see in front of you. Um, with, 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 which for me, the, these films kind of um, jumped out at me. So I, my day job is to watch uh, feature films, um, and I run Watershed Cinema, and I show a lot of feature films, I watch a lot of films, um, and I go to festivals and watch a lot of features and a lot of short films. And you always, there's always thing, there's that thing that happens in programmes, I'm sure other people can, um, this happens, that something stands out, something strikes you and you think, ah, that's interesting, you know, and then you follow careers and you follow paths. So th this is, these, these films for me really uh, were quite distinctive, they stood out. I'm still trying to, you know, kind of understand why, there's various technical things, there's various um, things about the content as well, the way the content's handled. So I think they're exceptional films. And we wanted to just begin to sort of flag that up in, in the catalogue and say, you know, these, these directors, um, th these people involved in these films, um, to promote them. And then I, I, after the festival, I usually get a call from magazines like Screen Daily, the trade papers, to say, well, we're doing the shooting stars, we're doing the stars of tomorrow, you know, Mark, have you, who have you seen, what do you, you know? So I thought rather than give them all that information and then they run with it, was really, this was us at the festival saying, here they are. So I'm delighted to welcome um, everybody here. And it is intended to be quite informal um, and for you all to uh, get to know each other. Um, but what I will do uh, here, and apologies that I've not met everybody, um, but I'll get to know you better by the end. And so what I'm going to do is just ask a general questions to everybody, just to kind of get the ball rolling and then um, if anybody wants to ask any questions and find out more, then please do. And really the first, um, I mean, a couple of questions, the first one really to everybody, and I've got another mic and we'll hand it along, is um, really how, I'm interested in how people got involved in the film industry. So the first question is, you know, how did you get involved um, in film and also then how the project came about, the film that you, that's in the festival, how did that come about? So just. Um, Kick off. If you could just introduce yourself, that would be fantastic. Um, hi, my name's Anna and I directed Goblin Market, which is in the festival. Um, I probably first became interested in film, particularly art house film, when I was at university. Um, I studied an English degree and I didn't go to, to film school, so I'm probably coming at it from more of a literary perspective. And um, my film that's in the festival is actually based on a, a poem by Christina Rossetti. Um, in terms of actually working in filmmaking, um, I became involved in short filmmaking uh, when I lived in, in London after uni and I work a lot with a, a co-writer, co-director who's here, I can embarrass her, um, she's called Anna as well and um, we make uh, sort of quite experimental uh, short films that are more sort of modernist and, and fragmented and, and do a lot of work together. And I um, have another job, so I do something com completely different. So filmmaking has been a, a hobby for quite a while, and I'm looking at just moving solely into that uh, next year. So it'll be quite an interesting uh, transition for me. Uh, what was the other question? I think, no. that, I think, I think you have asked. Well, how did this, how did the how did this film come, come about? How did you, you know, get financing together okay. for it um, and actually make it? Well, when I um, first came across the poem, when I was doing psychoanalysis as part of my degree, I, it immediately sort of stood out as being this incredibly visual and, and visceral poem, and I thought it would make a great film. It hadn't been made into a, a live-action film before. 
and we won a film competition with uh, another short that we made, which was quite good because it meant we had some money to make a, another short film, but it was non-specific. So we worked on, I worked with Anna adapting the poem into a script. Uh, I think the hardest thing was to sort of try and get some of the ambiguity back into the, the story because it felt very overtly sexual for a, a modern audience. So I wanted to kind of create this very sort of dreamlike film that had lots of symbolism and, and um, different layers in it. Um, we got a team of people together. A lot of people were quite interested in working on it, I think, because it was a period short and it had goblins and prosthetics and, and lots of interesting things that would probably work well as a, as a showreel piece for, for people. So we got a team together and um, shot it over just over a week. Um, and, and then sort of went ahead to, to complete it, and this is the first uh, festival that it's been in. Good. Thank you. Yes, uh, hello, my name is Dori Halderson. I co wrote and co directed When Rabbits Fly with uh, Helki here. Um, how I got involved with in filmmaking is, I mean, I guess it's going to sound very cliche, you know, I got a camera at age 13 and didn't want to do anything else since. Um, we both worked at a uh, startup uh, advertising company. Uh, and then we made some st student films together that won a couple of local awards. And uh, yeah, I think the, the story of how uh, this film came to be would be how give you a funny anecdote. <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, me and Dory we have always been um, like bouncing ideas around. And when Raps Fly was our first film. Uh, I mean, like a uh, real film, because uh, before that we just made like silly, silly little short films in, in high school and whatnot. Uh, and I did this uh, this music video in 2009, which got me invited to the LA Film Festival in 2010. And there was this uh, pitch meeting there that I had to go to and talk to like 10 or 12 distributors and producers and pitch like an idea. And I had nothing like the day before. I had no, no, I had no idea what, what, what I was going to say. So uh, I just took two ideas that we had been talking about. I just crammed them together, and they really responded to that. I don't know why, but they did. Uh, so after the festival, um, we just sat down and wrote the script. And month, a month later, we were in production. So, um, and I have a kind of somewhat different story than Dory when I, when I became involved in, in filmmaking. Um, I actually studied industrial engineering in university, which is, yeah, nothing like filmmaking at all. Uh, and, uh, but while I was there, I, I got involved in editing, and I've been editing uh, commercials and TV shows and documentaries and slowly started to uh, ease myself into directing music videos, which I've made like eight or nine, eight or nine of those. And then, yeah, we made this film and, 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 and hopefully more in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Nathan Hughes, I'm the writer director of uh, the, the Claw. And um, I've always been obsessed with film. I grew up in uh, West Wales uh, before the uh, internet uh, or uh, mobile phones or anything like that. And uh, we had this thing called um, uh, S4C. We didn't even get Channel 4, but you got Channel 4 kind of um, after midnight. And uh, I'd stay up because I was really into Barry Norman's film program. It was like a kind of you know film of the year sort of thing. So I'd see all this stuff that looked pretty cool, like kind of um, Nosferatu or kind of Fitzgeraldo or The Man Who Fell to Earth, and I'd stay up because they put them on at like one in the morning, and they were like kind of alien messages being beamed from another world. You know, I knew there was something else out there at this like provincial town thing. But then for me, the kind of mystery is how it took so long to kind of actually sort of get to be sort of making narrative films because I took a very sort of circuitous route through fine art and then kind of transmedia big outdoor events, and then slowly, slowly shifting closer and closer to narrative. But the weird thing was that always underneath, all my references and all my ideas came from cinema and the idea of sort of iconic cinematic moments. So um, uh, The Claw came from a breakfast conversation with uh, Jacob Parrish, who's the producer and the DP of The Claw, uh, last year. Um, I was doing an MA and um, I decided to take a year off to be sort of really super productive. 
And uh, we talked about sort of just kicking some ideas around, and the idea of um, you know the central little visual gag in the claw, or something kind of nasty coming out of a claw machine that shouldn't be there because they're kind of fun, you know, fluffy toy things. Um, that was it. we just thought it would just be a, a depict thing, a 90 second thing, and it just sort of evolved and grew, and uh, it's the film that say, some of you might have seen at the festival. Now. Um, hello, I'm Dan Geeson. I, I live and work in Holland. Um, I've lived and worked in Holland for, for 18 years. I have a, um, a Dutch wife uh, with whom I, I've made a lot of films. I've made over 20 short films uh, with all different sorts of techniques. Um, the film that's in this festival is, is the first time I've had a proper crew. Um, I came to filmmaking um, really out of an interest in connecting things. Um, I started in, in fine art. Uh, where I was making, also making videos, uh, but I was making a lot of drawings in, in spaces. Um, I do a lot of stuff with sound, which is also something I use in the films for myself and for other people, because uh, I, I have this theory of what, uh, something I call percussive ambience, which is um, uh, also related to, ha to how I think we, we look at the world, and that's actually in a, in a very percussive way. Um, which is a very, and very specific. It's like looking down a, down a toilet roll at everything. Um, um, so I use this, this, this idea in, in, in my films, um, a lot of which are um, kind of fantasy films. Um, the film that's here is a sort of uh, autobiographical film um, mixed in with bits of my fantasy, I think. Um, yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Rosanna Wong and I'm an animator. I graduated from Kingston earlier this year and um, I made the animation Skip Town, um, which is screening on Sunday. Um, so I guess my origins into animation actually came from quite a uh, juvenile admiration of my brother because he wanted to be an animator, so that kind of <laughs> spurred on a rivalry. Um, but um, I think it, it first truly clicked with me when I watched this Yuri Neustein film, um, Hedgehog and the Fog, and I was absolutely blown away by that, and I thought, okay, this is definitely something that I want to dedicate my life to. So that's how I came back into animation. Um, and I don't actually do any cutout animation anymore, uh, but um, with Skip Town, that was based on a short story that I had written. Um, usually my working process comes from the written word first, um, and then I'll get inspired by that rather than like, visual like, images. Um, so Skip Town was just this fragmented narrative I had going around in my head for a while. Um, and so that became my graduation film. And it's, it's based on transitional uh, moments in life and characters trying to move on to the next stage in life. So it's quite relevant, I suppose, um, to my point in life right now. I'm kind of standing on the crossroads trying to figure out what's next. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Samuel Abrahams, a director of a film called Hold On Me, which is screening in Brick 3 Power Games. Um, and like a few other people have said, I, I also come from a fine art background, but always knew that I wanted to make films, I think. Um, and I, after graduating, I kind of stumbled into shooting and then directing observational documentaries, um, which was a great experience to learn about storytelling and also just to have a job that was kind of involved with what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that documentary wasn't for me, so um, after a while, after a few years, I kind of you know, realised I had all this equipment at home that I could maybe use and make my own film with um, without anyone knowing and um, had this idea to make a um, a kind of what was called documents. It was me documenting my mates on a video camera but it was all scripted and made to um, look as if it was a real thing. Anyway, so that was a, a, a ten minute short film that we made and that got picked up by Channel 4 and made into a half hour uh, for Com Comedy Lab um, 
which ended up being called Hung Out. Um, and that was a great experience, we learned loads, got an agent off the back of it. Um, ultimately, the final film is really not the one that I intended to make, but that's a good experience to have early on. And um, that kind of then inspired me to just go out there and make something a lot shorter that um, I felt really did represent what, what it was that I wanted to do. Um, and that's a short film called Connect, which screened here two years ago. Um, so, sorry, I just, I just suddenly put that together. I was thinking, oh, you just look familiar. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Connect, so Connect screened here in the Southwest category two years ago um, and won the Southwest Jury Award. So, thanks again for that. And, um, and then also went on to be nominated for the BAFTA for Best Short Film. Um, and that kind of opened a lot of doors for, I kind of moved into directing commercials at that point. Um, so the past couple of years I've been very busy doing that whilst also trying to develop um, film ideas um, and the Hold On Me, the short that's screening here now is much bigger than Connect, um, much more ambitious film uh, that was shot 2011 um, and yeah hopefully some people can see it. Was there another thing that I had to Answer. How did how did that film come yeah, about? Yeah. Um, well, I had an idea for. Um, well, I was very keen to just make another film off the back because Connect was doing quite well and there was a nice bit of momentum and the producer that I'd worked with was kind of like yeah I could get another. He was kind of full of it, but he, he said that he could get another film off the ground really quickly. So I was like, well, okay, great. I'll come up with an idea. And so I had this idea of um, a. Uh, a set piece that I thought visually expressed what it was like being in a long-term relationship and uh, took that idea to uh, a, a playwright, Ella Hickson, who my agent had set me up with and um, we together we kind of extrapolated a, a narrative, a, uh, a bigger story that supported the idea. Um, and then we just kind of, within months, we were shooting it and. Um, yeah, that's, that's the story of Hold On Me. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Jessica Knights and I'm an animator. I'm here with my film, What Mary Knew. Um, I guess the reason I got into animation is I, I have quite a varying load of interests. Um, I tend to sort of flip from one thing to the other. So I found that animation was something that could sort of focus that attention for quite a long period of time and it's the most direct way of getting what's inside my head out onto a screen. Um, that's the sort of initial reason why I love animation, it's the most direct way of, of getting that world without having to dilute it at all by some real world constraints. Um, um, I, you, you were gonna... Just Basically, sort of the the reason why. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. Um, uh, what Mary knew was inspired by um, a lot of podcasts that I was listening to, um, Philosophy Bites, and I was just sort of trying to again focus this this interest that I had and to get other people interested in the subject. Um, it's based on the mind-body problem and uh, specifically how we stay a continuous person um, when physically we're changing constantly. Um, and I got really, really excited about this analogy um, and wanted everyone else to be as excited as I am about it. So I tend to use all of, a lot of um, sort of strange and interesting imagery to try and get people to be as excited about these things as I am. Okay. Uh, my name is Isabella. Um, my film is called Notes from Underground. It's in the international program. Um, I was in the Fringe Theatre in Stockholm in my late teens and uh, 
took a small video course uh, with an SVHS camera, if anybody's old enough to use that. And, um, and I shot a short film where my boyfriend um, walks towards the camera and then we cut and the camera's on the floor and he hits the floor and you cut it together and it, looked like, it looks like he's falling. <clears throat> so um, the magic of lying and cheating in uh, cinema was uh, extraordinary compared to theatre, so I switched over. And I've uh, been doing a lot of short films, 11 short films since then, um, working in every aspect of filmmaking uh, on a small scale. I've been to two film schools. <laughs> and uh, Notes from Underground is my graduation film from the Danish film school, and I currently live in Denmark. So, yeah, that's how that was financed. It's a very uh, prosperous school, so, so I was lucky. And um, it's about uh, the relationship between a pedophile and the girl he keeps in his cellar. And um, I was very much inspired by Sabine Dardenne's book, I Choose to Live, about the Belgian pedophile, Marc Dutroux, because they really developed a relationship. And um, it interests me how people are able to normalize really anything, anything in the world can become normal. And that's what I tried to, to uh, sort of yeah, investigate in the film. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, if you do pass it along, because we'll start, uh, uh, probably start here again. But I just, um, I mean, it is informal, please. Um, if there are any questions, that if we're <coughs> hoping that people will have seen some of the, the films. And if there's any questions that anybody wants to ask, um, go for it. Or indeed, if you want to ask each other questions as well, then feel free. If not, I'm going to start here. But uh, seriously, if anybody does want to, you know, if there's anything specific, um, I kind of, I, I'm sort of not diving in because I, I, there's a couple of things that came up. I, just, I want to kind of be democratic about it. <laughs> um, so here we shall just start with what you're working on at the moment, and you know where where you see your future filmmaking going. Once again, the same question to everybody. Okay. Um, I'm working on another short film at the moment. It's a sort of experimental fiction documentary crossover project, uh, which sounds quite grand. Uh, but um, it's something that Anna and I shot um, when we were travelling in Colombia. So it's about the kind of ethics of photography. It's about a photographer that takes some photos of prostitutes without asking their permission, without paying them, and it kind of ends up with the photos being displayed as art in a, in a gallery in London and it's kind of cut in with some documentary footage of us approaching these prostitutes to work with them and then only agreeing to, to work with us if we pay them. So it's, I guess, exploring things like poverty, tourism and the ethics of photography. Um, so we've still got that to edit and we're also developing a feature script together which is called Ellipsis which is a, a modular film. It takes place over six days. Um, the first three days follow this woman and she disappears part way through the film. And the second half of the film kind of goes through different days with the other members of her family as they're trying to work out why she's gone missing or, or disappeared. And I'm also looking at a couple of uh, adaptation projects as well with a, another producer who I work with on Goblin Market. Um, well, we're working on some things together and separately, so I guess I'll just start with what we're working on together. We're developing uh, a feature script based on uh, When Rabbits Fly, the short film. So it, it was always a bigger idea in our mind when we were uh, in pre-production. So now we're kind of, like I said, expanding it and uh, telling the full story. Um, also uh, in Denmark, I'm in talks with the producer about uh, developing a TV series that we've been wanting to make for a long time. And uh, then I have a short film that I uh, want to make on my own in Denmark as well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I've been working uh, in documentaries for maybe one and a half year now. I really want to get out of that because it, it destroys you as an editor, watching like 
hundreds and hours hours of 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 uh, interviews and all that, and I want to get into. Uh, <laughs> I want to um, focus in future on, on making more music videos. I've been doing uh, quite a lot of them, and also, yeah, making um, doing this feature film uh, when rabbits fly. That's my main goal right now. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm really broke. I need a job, um, <laughs> but. Uh, now, what was really exciting last night, uh, I don't know how many of you went to the Jeremy Thomas talk, but um, I mean, that was truly inspirational, uh, you know, that sense of, you know, cinema being something that's profound and um, just carries some essential truth about life in it. Um, and that there's, you know, there's so much fluff out there, which, you know, fluff is fine as well for entertainment, but um, uh, there's another film that we, 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 we shot last year, which is very different to The Claw, um, my MA dissertation was about landscape uh, allegory in cinema and uh, I'm from Wales, I've got a real big thing about landscape and, and people and figures in landscape and uh, you know I set out to make a film because I had this insecurity because of my sort of my past career that you know in fact when I saw you guys and I was looking at your bios I was kind of like oh my goodness you know it's like films going back years and years and years um, and I felt like I was playing catch up in some ways and, and maybe you know, I'm, I'm a victim of sort of being too strategical, but you know, it's not as if there wasn't passion in the project as well. But I set out to make something that would be kind of quite definitive and really lay down sort of markers in terms of themes and style and my ability to sort of direct drama and, and a whole bunch of stuff. So it would, you know, help me commercially in terms of getting work, but also moving forward as a, as a you know, filmmaker. And that, that film's still in limbo. Um, we had some problems and it's stuck, and it's kind of like a thorn or a worm that's in my, in my brain, you know, I feel like I need to just really exercise this thing, so I've been having some meetings at Encounters uh, with uh, talent development executives from the, the BFR yesterday, um, and uh, just, you know, looking to, to, to package that up as a feature. I think in some ways it might be a blessing that the film um, it failed at the time when we were shooting it, because we did actually put a lot of money into it. Because um, right now I feel like you know I've got a second chance. I can take all of that as sort of R and D, kind of I completely kind of tear it to pieces and rebuild it. Because there's something there. There's there's a couple of really strong elements. Uh, the story needs work, so I'd be looking to kind of maybe get a kind of um, a script editor or a screenwriting mentor to really hammer that story into shape and take it at, uh, up to 90 minutes and and just start you know making feature films. Really. Okay. Yeah. For me, it's the same with the uh, features. Um, I have two projects that I'm, uh, that I'm working on at the moment. Um, but film takes a long time, so when when I can't uh, get money for to make a film, I do music for other people or myself, um, or I work in the in a fine art arena. Um, um, yeah, feature the feature. Projects, um, it's, it's really hard, uh, and I'm, I'm looking for script writers um, or, or a script editor as well to, to work with script editors. Um, 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 oh, what else can I tell you? I don't know. Yeah, no, you can. You can there's, so, there's so much. But, yeah. <laughs> exactly, there is, there is so yeah, much. That's, yeah. that's one of the problems. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't really have anything specific going on at the moment. I'm just um, trying to get industry experience right now, and um, hopefully that will feed into any future projects. But at the moment, I'm actually concentrating more on getting back into writing short stories um, because that kind of came before the animation. And um, as I said, I always generate the animation after the story. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to build up on that and I might take an MA out next year and then focus on that. Um, I can tell you that recently I've completed um, an animation for BBC Radio 4, um, which sounds kind of contradictory because that's radio and not visual. Um, <laughs> but um, it's, it's supposed to be like a pilot. Um, and they're kind of testing the waters right now. I'm sorry, in my head that was 
funny pun because uh, <laughs> it's uh, a story about a sickly whale. Uh, so if you watched it, you would have gotten it. <laughs> but it's, it's on the BBC4 uh, website. And um, that, that would be really nice if they did any further commissions. Um, in fact, this fellow here, James Hadley, <laughs> um, he did a um, nice little sting for BBC Radio 4, the same series. So um, be sure to check it out. Uh, but yeah, um, short stories all the way at the moment, and then we'll see what comes up. Um, I was uh, de developing another short um, with the same writer, Paul on me, Ella Hickson, um, and it was an adaptation of her um, play, Precious Little Talent. Um, and it was a project I was very excited about, and we were talk, uh, talking with BFI about it, and they, they have, I forget what it's called, but they've got a um, short scheme now at the moment. And so we were developing with them, and it, it got to the last hurdle and kind of fell through. So uh, that was something I was working on whilst thinking about potentially, you know, getting a, a feature to develop, but to be honest, I'm at the moment seem to be very content with working with short stories, and um, I'm really enjoying directing commercials. I get to work with lots of different scripts, uh, with different visual ideas, it's a quick turnaround, um, so I'm getting a lot of experience very, you know, quickly, which is good. Um, and. I'm sure soon, you know, when the right project comes around, you know, I'll be very excited to start developing a, a feature. But another short, you know, um, I'd be very interested in developing another short when that comes along too. Thank you. Um, I'm quite like Rosanna. Um, I have, I've only just graduated, so I'm at the moment trying to make my way as a freelance animator and illustrator. Um, but I also, at the moment, am starting work on developing a short film about um, a psychosomatic disorder called Stendhal Syndrome, um, which has such an interesting bank of imagery behind it. Um, it's basically whereby someone goes to an art gallery, sees a piece of artwork, and just freaks out, basically. Um, they have heart palpitations, hallucinations, this can last for days, and I just thought that was really interesting, so um, I'm just going to start work and see where that takes me, basically. Okay, um, I have uh, two feature films in development. Um, one is a multi-plot set in a suburb of, uh, of Copenhagen, where I'm, I'm, I'm looking to... I, I'm, it's, it's about uh, several different families in within this sort of dollhouse setting and everybody speaks a different language. So, so it's, it's, I'm trying to put together these different destinies and these different languages in, in, in this one setting. So, yeah, um, the other one is, is about um, the women in uh, criminal circles of Copenhagen where um, there have been a lot of gangster films uh, focusing on the men and I'd like to make one where the women are in the center. Great, thank you. Um, again, does anybody, if, does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to... Um, I just really have a little something to interrupt. Just for you, I don't know if you know, but um, it's sure it's, there's not a Dario Argento film. Yeah, there you yeah. go, just in case. <laughs> 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 so, uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm going to go um, completely informal, um, and then we can all ask and get into conversations um, in the room, um, and say thank you very much to Future Encounters. Thank you. Um, just, just one thing before, um, before it all, we all scatter, I want to get a group photograph of uh, you guys, so the photographers over there, if we can just do that and then we, we can get into conversations. Thanks. <laughs>